In this tutorial, we're going to look at making a badge logo. And the very first thing I want to do, I'm going to create a folder. I like organizing my folders right away. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to call this badge logo. And inside of it, I'm going to double click and I'm going to create a few new folders, an AI folder. And that's where I'm going to put my Illustrator file. I'm going to create a resources folder because I'm going to put in my resources there. And actually at the end, I could also create a final folder. That's where I'll put my final PDF. So in the meantime, on Blackboard, there was the two EPS files, the logo texture and t-shirt. I'm just going to click and drag those and bring those into resources. So now they're there. They're always there. They're attached to the project of this folder, and I can always refer back to them. I'm going to open up Illustrator. I'm going to start a new project. Command N or file new. As it shows up, what I'm going to look to do is create that custom area. If I don't, I could just click on print, and it shows up that custom area. Number one, I want to click my points to inches, and the first artboard is eight and a half by eight and a half. This time around, I'm actually going to use the artboards tool here, and I'm just going to say I want four artboards. Normally, I could set up the artboards in the document when I'm ready to go, but for now, I'll let you just set up four there. Uh, but this time, I'm also going to have a bleed. I've added a 0.125 inch, an eighth of an inch bleed, and because this is linked together, I click it in one box, it shows up in all the boxes. If I looked at my advanced options, I could see CMYK color mode, which is what I want. If I do any raster effects, which we are doing this, it's going to be a 300 pixel per inch high resolution, which is great. But let's continue on and actually look at more settings as well. Now what I could have done as well is named it properly, which I'm always a big fan of naming it properly, last name, first initial, section number, whatever it is, and we're going to call this badge logo, and I'm also a fan of putting the month and the year, which is very useful for organizing. Next what I can do, I can look at the number of artboards, which is already there, the exact same as this, but I'm wanting this, this time I want them to go in a column, down, I can put the proper spacing, but I'll leave that alone, 8.5 by 8.5, perfect inches, everything else is the same, perfect, create the document. Now what I have, I have my four artboards, but I want to set them up properly. On the assignment, if I have my artboards open, the third artboard is to be 8.5 by 11. I double click on this icon, and now I make it 8.5 by 11. And the fourth artboard, I double click on the icon, it's going to be 1 by 1. And there I go. So, if I zoom out, Command minus, now I see that this artboard overlaps, not a problem. I'm going to click my artboard tool, and I'm just going to click and drag it. And there I go. I have that spacing there. Not a problem. Totally fine. I'm happy with that. If I want to respace it, I can click on that and say I want that spacing to be that again. And it'll help respace it again. And of course, if I want, I can go back to my artboards, select them all, Command A. And in my control panel, if it's not open, go to Window, Control. I can just center them all. Now they're all centered again, just like that. Center, aligned, horizontal. There we go. So I have them all set up. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to start playing around with... Uh, the circles, which is what I want to make. So my first, I'm going to grab my ellipse tool, which is under the rectangle tool. Click right on your mouse and grab the ellipse. What I can do is I can hover over the middle and because my smart guides are on view, smart guides, command U, they're on automatically by default. I can kind of find the center, which is pretty great. So I'm going to hold on option and I'm going to hold down shift. Holding down option lets me drag from the center. Holding down shift keeps a perfect circle. My first circle I want to be a black fill and no stroke. So I'm going to look at that, go to my color panel, black fill, no stroke. So the black is filled and the stroke has none. Then I'm, what I can do, I'm going to show you a few ways to duplicate. I'm going to click and drag, hold down option, and it converts my cursor to a double cursor, meaning I'm about to duplicate something. I hold down shift to keep it in line. And there's my uh, second duplicated circle. This arrow, or sorry, circle I want to be a white stroke, no fill, which I just did. White stroke, no fill, and I'm just going to scale it down a little bit, holding Option and Shift as per usual. Now with this, I can just click and drag it back in, and hopefully it'll realign using the smart guides. Or I can use the Align panel. When I click on one object, the Align panel shows up. When I click on two objects, the, all the Align shows up the align options in the control panel, or I can just use my align panel that I have open down here, which you could find all the panels under the window drop down. So I'm going to look up here, and what I want to look at is the align to artboard. And what that does, it aligns any circles or anything, any object to the artboard. So center horizontal and center vertical. Now I know on this artboard, which is selected, it has the, you can see a little black outline around the whole thing where this artboard does not. That means this one is the one I'm working on. This is the active one. It even shows me in the artboard panel here that that's 
the one so I've centered the line. Now just quickly looking at the align panel, what I can also do, I'm going to make a few other objects here, a few other shapes. And what I can do, I can look at this a little bit more. Align to selection. So instead of aligning to the artboard, what I could do, I could actually say I want to align to the selections, not the artboard. So if I center vertical, it aligns the circles to just the selections, not the artboard. So all the selections or the, all the objects become aligned together, which is a one good way to do it. And another way to do it is align to key object. But I like to do it manually like this. I select my circles. And once it's still selected, without pressing anything on the keyboard, I can press on something that is currently selected and it will align to that object. And this one happens to be, it shows a blue line around it. And now I can align to this key object, which happens to be, I can center, center, and it moves everything to the key object. So a couple different ways to align, but by default, and especially on this one, we're just going to need to align to artboard. And you can also find it down here in the align panel, align to artboard. There's also a distribution, but we don't really need to look at those right yet. But that's a, a different way to align multiple objects uh, with proper spacing in between. Okay, so we have that. Actually, let me look at that again. Properly align and align to selections. And now I could properly space the um, objects and make sure that they are, if I tighten this one up a little more, select them again and redistribute, it just tightens up that space in between. So a really nice way to do that. Let's continue on here. So instead of duplicating, what I can do now, I can actually do edit. And it's a paste in front command F. So what I'll do is command C and command F. Now what I actually did was copy the object, which happened to be the white stroke circle, and I can also now, I've duplicated it and now I've pasted it right in front of it. So there actually are two circles with a white stroke. And the bounding box shows up. What I can do now is just grab it, hold on Option and Shift and drag it down. And now I've done that. And what I want this one to be is a white fill. See what I did there? Instead of actually just ch changing this to white fill and this to none, I can click on this little swap arrow and it swaps. So now the stroke will be none and the fill will be white. I swap and there I go. I'll do the same thing. Command C, Command F, or edit, copy, and then paste in front. Now with that, I can bring that one down, hold down Option and Shift, and I'm going to convert that one to a black fill. Let me try that again. There we go. Now I can Command C, Command F again, make it a little bit bigger, and I'm going to convert that to a white stroke, or black stroke, sorry. And once again, I kind of made a little mistake there, but that's okay. So what I could do, I could select them all again, and Align to artboard, align, align. Now, ooh, wrong one. There we go. And once again, I'm going to shrink this down a little bit. And I'm going to Command C, Command F again. And make that one a little bit bigger. That's where I want that to be. And what I can do, I can click on all of the strokes, circles, and I can go to my stroke panel and I can make sure that they're all four point. And now, because they, they stand out a little bit nicer, which is great. The next thing I want to do, I want to select the stroke one here, Command C, Command F, and I'm going to make a dotted line. Now, in Illustrator. It's a little tricky to make a dotted line. I'm going to realign these. I think something moved on me. Great. So I'm going to select that circle with the stroke. And I'm going to go to my stroke panel. I want to make a dotted line. I'm going to click on dashed line in my stroke panel. And I'm going to make it the dash a zero point in the gap, 17 point. I'm going to turn the cap, which is by default a butt cap, which is just a flat um, cap, I'm going to turn it to a round cap. And from there, what I could do, I could just up the weight, and now all of a sudden I have a nice little dotted line there. A few different ways to play around with that. Okay, so there's my dotted line. Next, what I want to do, I want to put my type on a path. Command, so I'm going to grab this white circle over here. It's going to help me find that type on a path. Command C, Command F. I'm going to shrink it down about halfway. I want to find halfway in that black area. And there is my path. What I could do now, I'm going to click on my type tool, but I'm going to right click on the type tool and find type on a path. I'm going to click on it. And if I hover over that path, it shows me I'm about to click on that path. I click and I'm going to type in my name. Now, you can't see the name because it's a black fill on a black background. So what I need to do is convert that fill to white. I'm just going to Command A, which is Select All, or I could click and drag, and I'm going to select it to be white. Like you could use a swatch panel for that, you could use a color panel for that, or double click, and you could find that in the color picker. So there I am. 
Now what I want to do with the color panel, or sorry, with the control panel open, I'm going to click on the center align paragraph. This is going to help me out. Now it moves down here. That's okay. I'm going to click on my black arrow or white arrow. doesn't matter. And there's a little line over here with this line. And there's a couple lines here. We're not going to worry about these lines, but this is the one I'm concerned about right now. When I hover over that line, what happens is my cursor turns in a little bit different. It has a little arrow pointing up and a little line underneath it. I could click on that and click and drag it around and I can get it to the top. So now it's perfectly centered using those smart guides. And what I could do now, I can command A and I'm going to go to my character panel. If you don't have it open, window character. Here's my character panel right here. I'm going to click on a different typeface. Uh, let's click on one I currently had. How about a GNU and condensed black. Let's try that out. And let's play around with the character panel. I can change up the typeface. I can change up the font if I want to here in the typeface. Or sorry, in the character panel. I can change up the size if I want to. Obviously, I'll do that. I can change up the lighting, which is not going to help me in this situation because lighting only takes care of spacing between um, the vertical spacing between sentences or lines. I can change the kerning with individual spaces if I wanted to. Individual spaces if I really want to tighten that up. But right now I'm just going to leave it at zero. And what I like to do more often than not is make my um, kerning optical. And what I can also do is change up the tracking, which changes this all spaces in between all characters. You don't have to, kerning just selects one space. Tracking is all spaces. I can play around with the scale, which I don't like to do. I can play around with the baseline shift just to show you what that does. It just changes individual or a few different baselines, either up or down. And I can play around with rotation, which I'm not going to do, but you're able to do that as well. And what I want to do, I'm going to make it all caps. Sorry, let me select it all, make it all caps. But you could also click on the drop down and find a few different options there all caps, small caps, superscript, subscript, a few different um, options there as well. I can make it small caps, but I'm just going to keep it all caps. And once again, superscript, subscript, underline, and strike through. We could do as well. So I'm looking at that, and that's looking pretty good. But you know what? I want a more centered on the black area right now. It's a little, a lot of space here, a little space here. So what I could do, I can go on to type, type on a path options, and I have now a bunch of options here. I could flip it. Let me click on the preview. You always want to click on the preview if it lets you so you can see the live edits. So I can click on the flip and it can flip it on the inside or on the outside. I can get a few different effects. By default, it's rainbow. I can get a skewed effect. I can get a 3D ribbon, stair step, and gravity. But I want to look at a rainbow, which is very similar to gravity right now. And the baseline is what I want to look at. I could do a sender, which is below. I could look at descender, which is above, or I could look at center, and that's where I want that to be. So it centers it for me, and I say, okay, that's perfect. What I'm also going to do, I want to make another set of types. So I'm going to click on that, Command C, Command F, just like we did before with the circles. I'm going to click that, and I'm just going to click, say, graphic design, what I want to be when I grow up. So once again, there's two overlap, but that's okay. The one that's in front was the one I just typed on. I'm going to grab that long line here, and I'm going to click and drag and bring it down here. It can be a little finicky, so you do have to be careful. I'm going to let go and do that again. Okay, I'll just leave that there for now. And what I could do, I could flip it like to make it look more like a record as if it was, actually, let me just try that really quickly. Type, type on a path, type on a path options, and I can flip it if I wanted to preview that, sorry. But I'll just leave it like this for now, okay? What I want to do is I really want to organize myself because I'm overlapping a lot of things here. So what I can do, I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to call it type. So new layer or new layer on the drop down, And I'm just going to select the type, which I have one selected. I'm going to click this little square here, which indicates something is selected. And I'm just going to click and drag it up to the type now. I'm going to click on the second piece of type, and once again, click and drag that little square which indicates something is selected on this layer, and bring it up to the type layer. Now my type layer, I have all my type on the type layer. I could lock it, play around with it, I could make it invisible so I could just play around with the circles, or vice versa, I could shut this one off and just play with the type. Okay, next what I want to do, I want to um, look at bringing in, or uh, doing some effects. So here's my effects. I'm going to click on the large circle, and I'm going to add some effects to it. Effect is up here. I could add some vector effects and raster effects, but more often we want to look at these vector effects. So I'm going to make a little bit of a zigzag here. Distort and transform, zigzag. And what this does, this allows me 
0 0.05 for the size, so a, a subtle size, uh, 20 ridges for now, and I'm going to look at smooth. And if I preview that, it kind of creates a little bottle cap effect or a, ba a sewn badge effect, which is kind of what I'm looking to do. And I'll say OK. So now I have that nice effect there. And now I'm going to make another effect. Effect Stylize Drop Shadow. And with that drop shadow, what I could do, I'm going to make it 100% opacity. I'm going to make the 0x and 0y because I want this the light source to be directly above it and to cast a shadow. I'm going to make a subtle once again. A little blur, 0 0.05. I'm going to preview that. And I'll say, OK, that looks fine. Good. Now, here's an issue. When I want to re-edit the, the zigzag, say, I, I want to fix that. I want to add more ridges. I can't go back to effect and add more zigzag. Because what it's going to say, what Illustrator is saying is, like, do you want to add another zigzag? And that's not the case. I do not want to do that. So I'm going to cancel that. In order to re-edit any effect I have, I need to use the Appearance panel. I'm going to go to Window and Appearance. Now, what this does for me, it allows me to click on any object and tell me what's going on. So with the larger circle selected, it's a path, and there's a zigzag, the stroke is none, the opacity is 100% by default, the fill is black, the opacity once again 100%, and there's my drop shadow. If I want, I can click on the drop shadow, throw it out, click on the zigzag, throw it out, or I can go back in and click on it and re-edit the ridges if I want. And there I go. I've re-edited the ridges. I have more ridges now. That's how you re-edit an effect you already currently have as opposed to adding more on top of it. So with that done, uh, next what I want to do, I want to create a clipping mask. So with the clipping mask, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to my folder that I created, badge logo, resources, and I'm going to open both of these up. What I can do, I can click and drag these over top of my AI icon, or I can go to file, open, and it would open up there, file, open and I could just go and find the objects that they're in. The first thing I want to do actually before I do the clipping mask, I'm going to select this t-shirt. So this t-shirt is when I cut when I select it, I could command A, select all because it's the only thing there, or I select that imaginary rectangle and there I am as well. So I could look at this and it's all made of individual vectors. Really, really nice. I'm going to command C, copy that, go to my document, go to the third artboard, command V and bring it in. Now once again, I'm going to select that. I'm going to align, align, so it's perfectly aligned to the artboard. And I'm going to make a new layer, call it T-shirt. And I'm going to bring that square that shows me something's on this layer and drag it up to my new T-shirt layer. I'm going to bring the T-shirt layer to the bottom. And I'm going to lock it because I never need to touch it again. Unless you want to change the color of it, which you don't have to, I'm going to lock it. OK, so next what I want to do, I'm going to create this clipping mask. So with the clipping mask, I have these textures. Now I'm going to use this main texture, but I give you another few textures to use as well. The good thing about these textures, once again, they're just vectors. They're made of individual vectors. So because it's an Illustrator, I could copy and paste it. So Command, uh, sorry, just click and drag, Command C, and I'm going to bring this into Illustrator on this document here. Oh. I, want to, I don't want to paste it on. See, that was an issue. I was already selected on a locked layer. I can't paste anything on a locked layer, obviously. So I need to go to a layer that is not locked. Command V. There we go. All right, there's my texture. Now, what I want to do is I want to make a mask. A mask hides something and shows something. The mask I'm going to use is this big circle. Now, the circle is just going to be the mask for me. It's going to show something and hide something. But just to be on the safe side, what I need to do here is I want to show you, I'm going to change the fill to a different color because now this color shows me what's on top. And right now we can see the texture is on top because it was the last thing we pasted in. And now what I want to do is I want to bring what, in order for the mask to work, I need to bring the mask or this particular circle right now on top. So I'll let me do that. I'm going to go to um, Object Arrange, Bring to Front, or Learn Those Keyboard Shortcuts. And now it's in front. Now what I can do, that's all I have to do, select the texture and the circle, which will become my mask, right click, and make clipping mask. Or Object, Clipping Mask, and Make. And now look what happened. The effects, the fill of that circle disappeared, and now it's just the texture inside. So once again, if I want to edit this, I could click on it, I double click, and now I actually have access to that texture again. It hasn't gone away. All that space around that has not disappeared. It's still there, which is the great thing about masks. You can always go back and re-edit. I can move it around if I want to move it around. I could also click on the mask if I want to. I can even change up the size of the mask or do whatever I want with the mask as well. But right now, I just want to click on this. And what I want to do, I'm going to change the color of it just to show you. Change the color of it. And I'm also going to lower the transparency of it, maybe to about uh, 60%. 
and I double click because right now I'm in isolation mode. When you double click on a mask, you're in isolation mode. You can only work on that. I can't work on this, okay? I double click out and there's my clipping mask. All right, creates a kind of grungy texture, really cool. And you know what? This always interferes because I can't select things underneath it because the texture is there. So I'm going to create a new layer called texture and I'm going to put that texture on there. Now, if I want, I could have the texture work on top of the type so it actually affects the type or I could say no you know I want the type to be nice and clean I can click and drag these layers around okay so there I have my clipping mask all as well the next thing I want to do I'm going to create the uh, icons I'm going to right click on the rectangle tool or the ellipse tool currently I'm going to click on the start tool and I'm just going to oh I have too many ridges there don't I I'm going to bring down my ridges because I had another object I was doing uh, so I'm just pressing down on my keyboard and now I'm gonna find that star and that's the star I want hold down shift if you want and even option lets you kind of keep it really straight and I'll do that and there's my star I'm gonna make it white and I'll bring it in and I'm just gonna scale it down and to do oh let me actually lock the type so it doesn't move I don't want it to move on me and I'm just gonna align this star to the center like that and I'm just going to click and drag and bring it over. So obviously design is kind of in the way, graphic design. So I'm going to go back to type. I'm going to click on that one. And I'm going to try to move that circle around if I can a little bit just so it doesn't interfere with the star. There we go. So nice. So I have that lined up. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put that, make that pencil that goes inside here. So an easy way to make that is just it's a couple rectangles and a couple uh, triangles. So I'm going to click on the rectangle tool. And I'm just going to Command C, Command F, duplicate that. And I'll make that one black. Now I need to scale it down just a little bit because it's going to be on a black background. So I need to make sure that the white shows through. So I'll make that a little bit wider there. And then I'm also going to make my triangles. And a quick way to make the triangle, use the Star tool, hold down Shift, and then actually hold down the down arrows again and there's my triangle hold down shift keep it perfect there we go very nice so I'm just going to flip that there line this up a little bit better than that shrink it down so it fits I could have also used my uh, pen tool to make a um, to make this triangle as well it's giving me a Bit of trouble there but let's just yeah it looks pretty good I'm gonna move that down a little bit and then I'm just gonna duplicate again I'm gonna make this white command C command F and I'm gonna make this one black black and then I'm going to shrink that down and make my little lead there if I need that there we go okay there's my pencil so what I could do now I'm gonna select it all and what I could do I could group it I can go to object and group and by grouping it command G I can actually now select any part of it and it selects the whole object together. If I ungroup, object, ungroup, command, shift G, now it goes back to individual pieces that I have to select. So once again, I'm grouping it, I'm gonna bring it in, over top, I'm gonna shrink it down, and looking pretty good. You put it on a little rotation there, you just gotta hover over the corner and it turns this little cursor into this icon and you can do that. So there's my little pencil, all right? You could play around with that, make it however you want, but it should look just like this. And this is done, this part is done. Next, what I want you to do, actually what I might do here is actually put all the icons onto one layer as well. So I'm just gonna make a new layer, call it icons, and I'm gonna bring that up to there and that up to there. And now I have my icon layer and I do want the texture to play around with those two. So I'm gonna put it below the texture. Just click and drag the layer down. So that's all said and done. Now what I could do, I'm gonna click that and I'm gonna drag it down here onto this artboard. Now this artboard's selected and I'm just going to center. No, I can't do that because that's gonna happen there. I'll center that, there we go. So now I know it's perfectly centered on this artboard. And what I want you to do, I want you to change up anything you want and um, play around with that. And if you can't select the type because it's kind of being a pain, you can actually, once again, move it over and now select the other type because I'm just gonna align to artboard later. The cat, and I'll say loves to nap. And that's fine. And now I can bring this back and just say center to artboard again, and there I am. I can change up the typeface, which I'll do that really quickly. 
just to something else, doesn't matter. Acumen's really cool. Actually, it's a little too close to what I currently have. So let's go with, I'm a big fan of Avenir, wherever you may be, there you are. And I'll go light. And once again, I can bring that over. Oh, sorry, bring that over. Double click on the type there. And once again, Avenir. And I'll make it, once again, it doesn't matter. I'll make it light too, that's fine. Now the other thing I need you to do is I need you to play around with the type. I need you to change the icons. So we're gonna do different icons. The type is in my way, so I'm just going to get rid of these icons. And I'm going to make any kind of new icons. Now for me, what I did is I made some icons from an older file. I made a little cat icon, if I could find that. just so I could get everything. There's my cat. And I made some paws too. I'm just gonna copy those, Command C. And I'm gonna bring them in here, Command V. Oh, can't place it on an invisible layer. So I'm just gonna put it on the icon layer, Command V, and there they are. Okay. I have that and I have my type and everything is good to go now I would actually reposition that a little bit better maybe what I'll do is I'll shrink that down so it fits in nice oh click the wrong one that's what I wanted to do okay there we go that's fine now the other thing I want you to do, I want you to play around with the gradient panel. I want you to add some color to this. I want you to keep the texture, play around with the texture a little bit. Maybe add some different effects. There's lots of different effects to play around with. Under stylize, you can play around drop shadows and uh, other inner glows and other glows. You can play around with warping something, warping some type. You can play around with more distorting. Play around with something, do something a little bit extra to play with uh, more. Even let's do a little quick tweak here. Let's see what this does. Just to play around with more effects. Oh, I'm on the texture, that's why that's not working. So let me shut that off. Let me go here and I'll do that again. So make sure you're on the proper object. And I, this is a little too much, but I'm gonna drop it back and kinda have some fun with that. See what that does for me. Okay, pretty crazy. Well, that's fine. I'll say okay. I just want you to play around with the effects, get used to them, get familiar with them, and see what they could do for you. Next, I want to do, I'm going to add a gradient. So I could obviously add, just add a color, which is totally fine, not a problem. But what I want you to do is really add a gradient. So in my gradient panel, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to do this. We're going to click on the fill is selected and click on the gradient. There's my default gradient black to white. Now, this is linear. There's linear, uh, radial, and there's free transform. What I could do, I could reverse it by clicking on this button. It reverses the gradient for me. And here's the main bar which I want to look at. I have my uh, sliders, my little tabs here. So if I have my white one, I can move it over here, get a little more white. I can move the black one, bring it over here, make it a little more black. Or I could get this little balance piece here and move it around so I can get a different kind of balance. It doesn't matter. What I could also do, I can add more just by clicking underneath and I have more tabs and see what it does it adds the balance between the black and the white wherever you happen to be on that bar but what I could also do is add I could take them away click and drag take them away click and drag take away click and drag take away I'm gonna double click on this tab and what it does it opens up a few things for me I could change the opacity I can use a swatch which is this I can make my own color I'll go to CMYK and make my own color whatever I want it to be can make it kind of an interesting color. I'll just say, okay, I like that. And then the black, same thing. Double click on the black. Go to CMYK. And let's choose a color here. And I'll say that's totally fine. And there we go. So that's pretty cool. I could play around with that. But because this is a radial gradient, I kind of want to play around with, or sorry, because it's a circular, I want to play around with the radial gradient. So what I could do, I could add a little more purple there. So it comes out a little bit more. I could do whatever I want. Uh, and I can reverse that, see if I wanted the purple on the outside, blue on the inside. But there's also a new one. I'm going to leave that actually, but I do want to show you Free Transform. What Free Transform allows me to do 
is it allows me to use lines or points to create something interesting here. So the points, there's already some points, and you already see kind of what's happening. These individual points are colors. What I could do, I could double click, and I could select a new color. Now, my computer's going a little bit slower because this free transform does take up a bit of RAM. It kind of needs a little bit of a push here. So I'm going to say, that's good. I'm happy with that. I could double click on this one, and I'll select another color. Then I'll say, okay, I could also just choose it from the swatches. That's totally fine. And what I could do, I could actually make them a little bit bigger. And I can move them around. This one I'm actually going to grab, and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger by clicking here and making it a little bit bigger. And now what that does, it takes up more space and plays around. Free transform, very, very cool to use. And uh, it's a newer tool, which is totally great. So let's just say if you want to play with that, you can totally play with that. It lets the colors bleed in really nicely together. Make some interesting gradients. Okay, so this is done. Let's pretend this is done. I'm going to bring back my texture. And this is good to go. Now what I want to do, I'm going to take this, and I'm going to drag it down to this on my T-shirt. But what I also need to do, I need to do something here. I'm going to do something incorrect first and then correct. So by default, Illustrator, Preferences, General, I can go and by default, Scale Strokes and Effects is not on. Let's look what happens when we do that. I'm going to duplicate it, hold down Shift and Alt, and I'm going to drag it down, scale it down, holding Alt and Shift, and look what happens. My circle's off, my uh, effects are all messed up. That's what happens when you don't scale strokes and effects. Now let's do that again, but let's put it back on. Preferences, General, and Scale Strokes and Effects. Okay. Now I'm going to do that again. Select it again, drag it, and I'm going to bring it down here. Hold on Alt and Shift, Option and Shift to drag it. And now look at that. That's perfect. Exactly the way it scaled the effects properly, and it scaled the strokes properly. So I'm just going to delete that. Perfect. And I'm happy with that. All right, there we go. Cool. All right. Now I have that, and that is good. Now what I want to do, I want to look on this last artboard here. The last artboard is the pin artboard. And what I want to add to the pin artboard is a bleed and a die line. Now, these red lines on all the artboards are the bleed area. We need to place a rectangle from on the red line. It covers the full red line. And what that does, I'm just going to make it any color, but the color you should make it is the color uh, that your um, gradient is made up the most. And it happens to be, I'm going to pick the eyedropper, it happens to be this blue. So I'm going to click on that blue, see if I can get it. No, couldn't get it. So let me actually drag this down here. <laughs> Holding down Option. And I'm just going to try that again. See if I can grab that color. There we go. Well, it's actually the full gradient, which is totally fine. And what I can do now, so that's my, well, I don't want the effects on there, so I'll just grab the appearance, and I'll just throw out the effects. Gone, gone, and gone. And there I just have my gradient inside that fill. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to make a new layer, call it bleed. I'm going to bring it just above the t-shirt and I'm going to lock that because I don't need that anymore. Locked. That bleed is set in. Oh, sorry. Didn't actually put it there on the bleed. I just made it. Okay, now I'm going to lock it. Now I can't touch it. The next thing I want to do, I want to make a die cut. So this bleed is set up so anything when the printer cuts here, 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 and here, they're going to cut off this ink area. And what's going to have, I'm going to end up having ink to ink or sorry, edge to edge ink coverage, and that's exactly what I want. So I won't have a thin white line that goes around this when they cut a bunch of them and things tend to sh uh, shift a little bit. Uh, the bleed will protect me from that, and that's exactly what I want. But now I'm going to make a die line. So I have my um, circle selected, and I know that this artboard is one by one. And I also want my die line to be the full width and height of the artboard. So I could just double click anywhere, and I can make a one by one inch circle. I'll say okay now there's my circle but the circle needs to be specific it has specific parameters what I need it to be is a no fill a cyan stroke so I'll go to my stroke I'm uh, sorry yeah, cyan stroke I'll make go to my swatch panel get the cyan or I could just make it myself in the color panel and just drag my cyan to 100% and go to my stroke panel and make it 
an eighth of an inch, 0.125. The printers recognize this as a die cut. Now we can definitely let them know that there is a die cut there. Now it's a little tricky because it's a almost, it's a blue on a, cy a cyan on a blue, but you can still see it there. What I'm going to do, I'm going to also make a new layer, call it die line, and I'm going to bring the die line up there, and I'm going to lock that. But the die line needs to be on top of the artwork. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to drag it right to the very top so the die line is always on top. If the die line is below, the printer won't see it and they won't know to cut a circle. So make sure the die line is on top. So now what I can do to finish it off, bring this in and I'm going to scale it down. Inside that die line, and there I go. Now it does not have to be perfect, but it does have to be centered in there. Okay. It, I can shrink it down a little bit more. And if you're having trouble, uh, you can shut off your smart, your guides. <laughs> Sorry, view, smart guides, if you're having trouble clicking around. Now I'm having a bit of an issue with my type here, which is totally fine. So let me select one and delete it. Loves to that. There we go. Something happened there, and that's totally fine. So here I am. I have exactly what I needed, and I'm good to go. That is the assignment. And what I also want to cover is looking at outlining type. So sometimes a printer will ask you, say this type, I want you to outline the type or create outlines. So this is why we put our type on one layer. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you something here. So I have my type and I'm going to duplicate this type, type layer. What I could do, I could click and drag it down here and it duplicates it, or I could hold option, click and drag, and now it's gonna duplicate that. Or I could drop down menu and say duplicate type copy. So either way, I've already duplicated it. I'm going to call one of them outlined type. And the other one editable type. So I'm going to have type that's editable still. And some type that is outlined. Now outline means, so I'm going to shut off my editable type. I know I have that layer. I'm going to select this. I'm going to move this type over for just a second. I'll move it over. There it is. Now the type is editable still, but it's on the outline type layer, so I know I'm safe. I'm going to double click on that, and I know I can still edit this. I can change it to whatever I want. However, what a printer might ask, or what it might be ideal to do, is outline the type. I'm going to go to object. Actually, I'm going to select all these. Object and, sorry, type and create outlines or command shift O. And now what I've done, the type is no longer editable because it's individual vectors. It's almost, you can consider it pictures of type. It's not actually type anymore. It's just an outline of that type with the vector paths and hey, you can always play around with this. So there's a, a couple different good things. There's a different way to play around with these because of that, because it's all now vector points, which you know how to play with. And you can actually also, um, make it safe for you because if you send this to a printer and they send it to their ripping software and the ripping software doesn't recognize the typeface uh, through that flattened PDF or something's wrong there, they would suggest you send them an outline type or what they might do is just let the type go, not be too concerned with it. And it's not the type that you chose. We don't want to put that control into their hands, if, especially if they're on a, a tight uh, squeeze and they need to get this done right away. Uh, unless they ask you for that outline, I suggest uh, you can leave it alone, but it's always good to know how to outline your type just in case and convert it to pictures, which is a good idea. So now what I can do, all this type is outlined and I can bring it back in. Once again, I can center and now it's centered again. And now my type is outlined. But if I ever need to go back, I can go back to my editable type and just edit whatever I want. Okay, so you have an outlined type and an editable type. Okay, that's all I'm looking for you to do. So you've saved it. Here's my other type too that came from these ones. So I have a nice, actually let me label this one logo just not to leave that one hanging. So I have a die line layer that's locked. Outline type and editable type. You can even lock this editable type and play with it later. I have a texture layer, icons layer, logo layer, the bleed layer and a shirt layer. I want the t-shirt, bleed, and die line layers to be locked so you can't move them. And you should prove to me that you know how to lock layers and make sure uh, you understood that. And next what I want to do, if this is complete, I'm going to save this in my folder that I made. Badge logo, AI, last name, first initial, section number, badge logo, and I save it as an AI. Save and OK. And now what I can do, I can go to file and I'm going to save a copy to make the PDF. So I'm going to make that PDF and I'm going to place it into my final folder and there's my PDF get rid of the word copy 
and make that PDF. There we go. If I want, I could actually change up how many, which artboard I want to use. Do I want to use one, two, three, or four? If I just want to show four, I could put in four, but obviously I want to show all of them, but I can control that right there. All, and I save. What I want you to do for this assignment is what I normally do is I go to my default and I say press quality. Press quality, make sure any raster image is not compressed. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. Now, there are no raster images on here, which is great, but still I want you to get in the habit of going to press quality and compression. There's none, but the marks and bleeds is what we need to look at because this bottom artboard does have a bleed on it. So I want you to be able to, you could, all printer marks are not what we want, but you can add them, trim marks, registration marks, color bars, and page information. But for this assignment, and for really all my assignments, I just want you to add the trim marks. The trim marks are gonna show me, show the printer where they need to cut. And then also, not only that, you need to also show the bleed. So you want them to see the bleed, not just where they cut. You want them to show how the bleed extends past the cut. So when they cut it off, it gets rid of that. Now I could use my use document bleed settings, which I've already set up at an eighth of an inch, or I can go in and manually put them in and because it's linked it's there too but I use the document bleed settings it's already there good to go so general view the PDF after saving very important and then also press quality and marks and bleeds trim marks and use document bleed settings and that's it I'm gonna save the PDF And I view it after saving, and there it is. And there are my trim marks. Now, the trim marks aren't important for the first three artboards. They're important for the fourth. But that's everything I needed there. My second artboard looking good. Third, nice. And then my fourth. Now, you see what's going on here. These are the trim marks for the uh, fourth artboard. So the printer is going to cut here, cut here, cut here, and cut here. And what they cut off, they cut off this strip of ink here. And what that leaves is this nice edge of ink. So there's no white strip, there are not gonna be any issues there. And then they're gonna take a die line, they're gonna take a, a cutter, and they're gonna cut a circle out of that die line. And you're gonna have a nice circle to go on your button. Now something happened there with the type, I think I took that off, but that's okay. I knew what I, um, I knew the issue there when I duplicated that. Yeah, I took the type off, but I could just put that back on, which is totally fine. Okay, so that's what I'm looking for us to do. And I hope that helps you figure out this issue. Now, I do want to cover one more thing. Now, if I have my bleeds on or I forgot to put my bleeds, I could always go back, File, Document Setup, and I could put my bleeds back on. I could edit the artboards. I could do a few things, change my uh, inches or change my unit of measurement. But mainly, I just can go back and get rid of the bleed or add the bleed, whatever works out for you there. I hope that helps.